Hello, and welcome back to Absolute BSS, the Battle Spirit Saga podcast, casual petitive, with uh, your hosts, me, Cameron. And me, Eric. We are back with another episode of uh, looking at some spoilers, got some fun stuff to talk about uh, in that realm, and also, Eric is playing in a store championship this weekend, so I'm really excited to uh, hear how that goes, and we will report back on that in the next episode. So uh, be sending Eric some well wishes and good luck. Uh, yeah, you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I'm pretty excited to to be competing in that. Um, if you're interested in seeing what deck I'm playing and some changes I've made to it and sort of my progress with it, we do have a video up on our YouTube channel. So go search Absolute BSS Pod on YouTube. You should be able to find us. And it's our most recent video other than, I guess, this one at the time that you're watching this. Right. If you're watching this on YouTube. Uh, but it's Cam and I just playing some casual, competitive games against each other, a little bit more towards the competitive side. In this case, Cam actually played some of the, the top tier decks that are currently floating around, which, by the way, for anyone listening, if you have not checked out the uh, webcam tournament winner, the, the purple mid-range deck, that deck is nuts. That deck I... is so good love it um we yeah we've played like three times this week um just getting ready for uh the store championships we recorded the first time so yeah there there already have been some changes made to the deck that um eric is going to be taking and i am a little bit bummed that we didn't get the other two on recording but um that purple mid-range deck so basically yeah eric brought his deck that he was thinking of a couple of decks a couple iterations of it and all i did was uh, go on to BSS Dev and um, or BSSDB.dev and uh, net deck a couple of different colors, but from that June 11th online webcam tournament, um, and that purple mid range deck especially is so insane. I went on TCG Player and started buying some singles <laughs> uh, because it's just so fun and so aggressive and so powerful. But uh, yeah. Eric's got some heat. Eric's got some pink steam. I would say. Uh <laughs> That's an interesting way to put it, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I you don't get to see this in that video, but I will mention, I I think my deck matches up pretty nicely against white, yellow, and red pterosaurs. Yes. Uh, the only thing that really gives me trouble is that purple deck, and I have a feeling that some people may be playing it. So I ended up just slotting in some anti-purple hate into my main deck. Yes. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Let's see if that backfires. Maybe I over prepared for that, and everyone's <laughs> going to be playing like per, uh, yellow aggro or something, and I'm just going to be a little under prepared. But I think you you'll be what? fine. That deck is really a Swiss Army knife. Yeah, that's that's kind of how I designed it to be. Uh, just really quick, I'll mention it's a what I'm calling a toolbox style deck. I don't mm -hmm. know if that's a universal term, but it's a style of deck that I've really enjoyed playing in other card games that I play. So, for instance, um, when I used to play Android Netrunner competitively, I had this Kate deck. Uh, Kate's ability is she can reduce the cost of any program you play by one. And so I just took full advantage of that and played all these wonky, like, one of copies of various programs that can do all sorts of things for you. And then I just added in a bunch of draw cards. So in that deck, my goal was to just like find the pieces I need for the situation I was in and then just pull them out of the deck and hopefully deal with whatever I needed to deal with. And so that's the approach I took for this deck is I put in a lot of one ofs that are sort of just in there to deal with very specific scenarios. And then I'm using Volcanic Canyon to discard anything that's not relevant to the situation I'm in. So it's a really fun deck to play it can really put up a really good fight against a lot of different decks. And uh, I'm excited to continue working on it and add new cards as we get new cards added to the game. That's right. And that's a great segue, Eric, because we're talking about spoilers from the False God set, the second booster coming out soon. Um, I will say I, I signed up for uh, a Gen Con Battle Spirit Saga tournament on Thursday morning. So the very first day of the convention, the very uh, first event that they're doing for battle spirit saga and as i was reading like the criteria it's like 
these are the cards that are legal and it listed like you know all five of the starter decks and the first two sets and like some promos and i was like oh yeah that will be out by then uh so i really am uh, gonna have some fun deck crafting of my own here uh over the yeah. next 48 days before gen con so i'm looking forward to, to that we're gonna have to really crank out some practice games so that you get used to using the new cards before you go <sighs> yeah it's uh there's some really cool stuff coming out in this next set too so let's uh let's just let's jump let's into it. it yeah we're <laughs> we're very much falling behind uh we haven't been able to record as as quickly or as often as we'd like to during the spoiler season so uh we're going to skip over some I'm sure a lot of you, if you're listening to this podcast, um, you probably have already looked at a lot of these, but we're going to just discuss some of the newer ones and just go down um, and do that over the next 55 minutes here. So we're just starting at the very top of the Twitter page right now, and this is exciting for me because this is some yellow, and uh, this is very cool because we're getting bird folk. Yeah, and we're finally getting a new way. Out. Yeah, we're getting a new way to play yellow, uh, moving away from a lot of the two costs. I say as this first card is a two well, cost, but I think a lot of these do fit in pretty nicely. Into they some decks. sure do. They can kind of keep your big fabled beast protected too. Let's just let's just start with it. Um, I've got air sniper breeze. So this is a two cost, reduced by one bird folk yellow spirit card. At level one for one core, it's 1,000. Level two for three cores is 3,000. Level three for four cores is 4,000. So, you know, decent scaling. Uh, but one, two, and three level effect during your opponent's turn, all of your yellow spirits that cost four or more cannot have their cores removed by your <laughs> opponent's effects. Finally. <laughs> this basically is just a middle finger to purple. And yes. I love that. Yes, it is. This is a, no, you're not going to drain me. I've got this valkyrie siren bird angel with a like a bow and arrow gonna snipe your purple shenanigans <laughs> um so i'm super excited about that as a very heavy yellow player um and it is a two cost so you can you can tutor this card pretty easily and slap it down there and protect your god beasts your uh um alice's your michaela's even you know there's a lot of uh uses for air sniper breeze yeah it's two cost. It it is pretty vulnerable to removal, and especially with an effect like that, I think it's going to get targeted pretty quickly if your yeah. opponent is playing purple. Um, but you know what? I think yellow has some good cards to where you don't even care if this thing dies because you're probably going to get a core added from the void into your reserve, and you're going to draw a card from free stall. Yep. Like in the Bless Cathedral. Yeah. Like yeah. it's just another thing to get in the way of what purple wants to do. And with how, like we said earlier, with how prominent purple is in the meta, quote unquote, right now, um, we like seeing some purple defense showing up in, in uh, some of the colors that really need it. Yeah, I think if we're doing champ or chump, I think definitely side deck champ. Yep. Um, main deck, maybe like a one or two of. Yeah, I wouldn't call it a chump by any means, um, yeah. especially because it is a two cost. I, I feel like this card's going to show up a lot, and I do love yeah, that. Yeah, the, the fact that it's two cost is very relevant. Yeah. Okay, um, speaking of two costs, I'll go ahead and talk about the next card. Go for it. Um, this is the big the big bird folk, or should I save this for last? No, nah, let's just go. Yeah, let's just go for it. Uh, big bird folk here, Air Brigade Captain Raphael. Or Raphael? I don't know. I don't Probably know. Raphael. Seven cost, uh, Ninja Turtle. I'm uh, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> seven cost, three reduction, Bird Folk Spirit. Level one for one core, 4K. Level two for two cores, 5K. Level three for four cores, 8K. Very nice stats there. Totally out of Burning Force range from the very beginning. Love it. Um, at all three levels, it has two effects. So when it attacks, select a card that costs two from your trash and return it to your hand. Absolutely. Amazing. Absolutely. Amazing. That is a solid, solid ability. And it's not, and it's only, it's, there's more, there's more. <laughs> yeah. If you have four or more other level one spirits, select two of your opponent's spirits, reduce their BP by 3000 during this turn. Oh, so I love got, it. We've got some new, um, still keeping in the theme of yellow of, you know, prioritizing these lower cost spirits, but now we're focused on level one. 
Yes. Uh, spirits. Which, which is... is what you do. You 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 flood wide with little yellows, little level ones, and you put your big cores on your big guys, like your Alice's and your uh, Behemoth. And this just really rewards that. It reminds me a lot of yellow in Digimon, which reduces BP with all these fun little tricks. And uh, th- yeah, I, I just love that. And you're going to be able to swing in with this. Uh, and yeah, go for that last effect real quick, and then we'll, well keep talking I wanna, about this. I will comment that ability I just read, right? If you have four or more other level one spirits, select two of your opponent's spirits, reduce their BP by 3,000 during this turn. That, mean, that, that ability basically reads, when the spirit attacks, get a free burning force. That's such a good point. Yeah. It so is. Good. Um, and then level two and three. So not at level one, but honestly, level two is only two cores. So this is very doable. During either attack step, when a core is placed into your reserve, select one of your opponent's spirits, treat it as level one during this turn. Man. This card is an absolute champ in every way. I am, I, I know yellow's your thing, but I'm excited to build. To build well, yeah, deck. absolutely. I love it. I This pairs really well with that card that's like, your little yellow two, or level twos can't be blocked by uh, your opponents with level one. Like, mm-hmm. Oh man, it's just so so good. Oh wait, is that the god beast that says that? It's one of the fabled beasts. I forget which one right now off the top of my head. It might be the king see. behemoth. Um, but yeah, just while you're looking that up, I'll I'll gush yeah. about air brigade. Yeah, Captain it Raphael. is it is god beast behemoth. Level, That's right. Your spirits that cost two cannot be blocked by your opponent's spirits that are level two or higher. Oh, uh, level two or higher. So okay. It's actually kind of a non bow but you know what? I might be swapping out God Beast for this, just at least in the beginning. Or at uh, least instead of four God Beasts, you can do two of each. You can, you know, like, because it's really, both of these are, are good. And so if one gets removed, you have the backup for the other one. Like, if, if your opponent is really leaning hard into trying to keep things level two and above, you play the God Beast. Um, if they're going wide, you play Air Brigade Captain Raphael. I think they can both exist in the same two cost decks. And, uh, Man, it's just really, really exciting. I, I love the concept of these bird folk and how they're going to fit in with, like, the angels and the fabled beasts. I'm a big fan. Yeah, really good. Really excited about this card. I love it. So the next bird folk on our list is a five cost, can be reduced by three, bird folk, yellow spirit, scout Crondale. And at level one, 3,000 for one core. Level two, 4,000 for two cores, and level three, 5,000 for four cores. So still pretty pretty decent leveling, especially in yellow. Like, you know you're not going to see high numbers, but it's really about their abilities and uh, being able to level up for cheaper. So this, yeah. this, uh, this spirit has when destroyed by opponent, and I love cards like this. Reveal the top two cards of your deck, add one bird folk spirit card from the revealed cards to your hand, and discard the remaining cards. So you're tutoring for... Raphael, you're tutoring for um, the two costs that we talked about earlier. And it also has the ability at level 1, 2, and 3, during either attack step, all level 1 nexuses lose their effects and cannot regain them. That's mm. pretty good. So this blanks Rocket City. Yes. Um, trying to think of what level 1. I mean, Netherworld Depths. Oh my gosh. You can start yes. exhausting and they don't get to draw oh, during is... either attack step while this is on the field. It's anti purple. Oh wow. I really dig that actually. I love it. Uh, anything after those games we played, anything that can blink Netherworld. Else, <laughs> I wish really we had that good. one on camera. One of the last games we played with that purple mid range, I, I just I threw down three Netherworld depths and I'm like, there's no way this doesn't work for me. And. <laughs> It worked really, really well. Yeah, it's. Yeah, oh, you want to do something? I'll just draw three cards. Yeah. At that point, my strategy changed from let me try and deck you. Like. I know. Yeah. I was just like, this game doesn't even matter. Like our <laughs> life points don't matter. What matters is like, let me just exhaust as many times as I can and see if I can deck you. And we laughed um, about that deck having a fifty-first card. It has fifty-one uh, cards in the main deck. And now I kind of know why. <laughs> it's because, yeah, because everything every, draws. Because every single card says if you do something, you draw something. Yeah. 
Oh, it's it insane. was crazy. But yeah, so um, Scout Crondale can turn off those netherworld depths for you while it's on the field, and it's relatively cheap to throw out if you're going wide and yellow anyway. Yeah. Um, so I think that this card is pretty decent. I feel like the when destroyed ability could be a bit stronger if it didn't need to die to do that. But Yeah. Um, if that overall, was a when summoned, that'd be even fine. Yeah, I don't feel confident giving this champ or chump just yet. I think I need to play with it. Yeah, that's fair. I totally agree. Could could be another side deck card just for Netherworld Depths. Yep, and it is the 69th card of the set. Nice. So we love nice. that. That's a good one. Oh, well, that definitely assists with the champ status there. Um, Ooh. I'm so excited for this one. I I so I haven't seen this yet, and so this is my first time seeing this, and I'm immediately oh my gosh. Okay, wait. I, I've been thinking about read, it all day. I just <laughs> I just read ahead, and I shouldn't have done that. Okay, yeah, let me I, talk about this. I accidentally saw this earlier, and I've been so excited to talk about it since. Go for it. Okay, clock a dial. Yes. Oh, he's a crocodile with clocks and gears all over him, and his weapon is a oh. minute hand from a clock. And, and the other one's like a turnkey. Oh my gosh. Okay, not. I know we do this every episode, but I'm going to plug the YouTube channel. Or at the very least, if you're not going to go to our YouTube channel to see this on video, go to the Battle Spirit Saga yeah. Twitter and look at Clockadile because I am in love with him. This is probably my favorite art in set two so far. And anytime we get a new fabled beast i'm excited but wait till you hear these ability or this yeah, ability so, so four cost two reductions so this thing's pretty much always coming in for two because it's Boom. yellow you're gonna have lots of creatures or easy lots of fabled beast so super relevant spirit type mm -hmm. uh, level one one core for 2k level two two cores for 3k level three four cores for 5k so the stats meh he's but, squishy He's squishy. Wait till you hear this, wait till you hear this ability, though. Level 2 and level 3, so for 2 cores and above, this spirit gains blessed. Ugh. That is right, folks. We get another blessed spirit if it has the soul core on it. And while it attacks, uh, it has blessed. So if you put the soul core on Clockodile, it has blessed. Yep, so, and yellow doesn't typically care about the, the soul core. So you are throwing the soul core on Clockodile. You're getting that blessed. Uh, it's hanging out there with Hippocampo. You flood the board with your little Phantasmal Paradise Nexuses. This guy is gaining you health because we're not capped at six. We can go higher, and we're gonna. Clockodile is a must-remove when you see it on the board, and I love him. You know what? Thematically, he is increasing your clock. That's like true. Clock. He's giving you more time. He is. And he's mean about it. My gosh, this is a perfectly designed card. I love it. I just got paid yesterday. <laughs> Maybe I need to go ahead and secure my four copies of Dual Eagle. Yeah, before, man. Before it absolutely skyrockets. Because Blessed, even just with this one additional card, yeah. I, think blessed, I think Blessed is now a deck. Like well, just and blessed. just Fabled Beast Blessed. So Dual Eagle is yeah. Fabled Beast. So you're putting... The Hippocampo, the Clocodiles, the Kate Sith, um, and you are tutoring into those Fabled Beasts, the Flying Turtle. You're tutoring into yeah. those Blasts. You're dropping four Phantasmal Paradises, so they're all powerful. And then they're pushing through Blast attacks that can't be stopped. Yeah. I'm this going is... full Fabled Beast when Clocodile comes out. Man, such a cool card. Yeah, I got to get at least one Dual Eagle uh, next time I get paid. Because yeah. <laughs> I, I just, oh my gosh, when Clocodile comes out, this is probably what I'm going to run in Gen Con. Just Yellow Fabled Beast, Blessed Glory. Oh, I can't wait. We can obviously resolve this off uh, off mic later, but uh, I can't make it to that tournament. So if I get three, if I get three and you get one, we can set you up. I love that, and I love you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, yeah. next up. This yeah. one's also pretty exciting just because of the type. Yep. So this is a two cost, we love that, uh, Yellow Spirit Otherlander, which I'm very interested to see more of, um, Arcana Jack Hector. So this is that cool, like, Alice in Wonderland, uh, you know, it's got the, like, different suits on it, like diamonds and spades and clubs. 
Um, that's kind of yeah, their the whole motif. This, it's neat. The art on this is neat. This is a textless card, so it doesn't have abilities. Um, but here are its stats lines. Level 1 for 1 core is 2k. Level 2 for 2 cores is 3k. Level 3 for 5 cores is 6k. So kind of expensive, but it's an other lander. I'm sure we're going to see some more support for these. It is a just free 2 cost. Yep. And, uh, yeah, it, it just helps out with some of the yellow support for now, and it looks cool. I didn't mention this about Clockadile because I felt like it kind of went without saying, but obviously Clockadile's champ. Um, Arcana, Arcana, Jack, Hector, I think right now in a vacuum, I think is chump. Yes. But I could definitely see, because of the other lander type and the fact that it costs two, this probably slots into a deck somewhere. Yeah. Um, maybe it gets replaced later as we get more cards if you're building an other lander deck for some reason. So I guess we'll just have to see what other other lander stuff there is. Yeah, I would venture to say that you'll slot this in with more other lander support, which the next card is other lander. It doesn't really tie into this yet, but we can maybe start to piece together some stuff. Yeah. So this is Ar Arcana Beast Queen. Uh, this is another lander, four cost, three reduction. So it could potentially come in for one. So level one for one core is 2K. Level two for two cores is 3K. Level three for three cores is 4K. So I'm noticing some not so great stats on the other landers. Yeah. It does have a when summoned ability, select one of your opponent's spirits, reduce its BP by 2000 during this turn. So potentially a, maybe a card you might use in a mirror match against other yellow. I would also like to point out that it is mm -hmm. very cheap. The one summoned is level one, two, or three. And you can basically bring this in for a total of two cores if you have a board already. I think what the other landers might want to do is you stack multiple copies of cards like this and you play the mm -hmm. Blessed Cathedrals a lot so you're drawing a lot of cards at a time. Because if you bring in three of these in one turn you can reduce BP by 6,000 that turn. And that's not nothing, you know? Like that, no, that's true. that could stack. be enough to, you know, you put three bodies on the board, you take away a big chump block, kind of like early on in the game, and you might have enough to swing in, who knows? Yeah, or you play this, you play this in main phase, you reduce something by 2K, and then um, in your attack phase, you attack with that other bird folk. Right. Reduce by 3k, so now you've reduced something by 5. Yeah, I, I feel like the other landers work well in the luster kind of archetype with yellow because mm. the other landers like this one, you're right, they reduce that BP. During the battle phase, you start bringing in some angelic pressures or drowsy fumes, and then you bounce those back, and so you're just very slowly over the course of a turn chipping away, but then you get to repeat that each time you attack, and then you just overwhelm. So it could be good. I, I'm not I'm not calling this a champ by any means. It's leaning towards chump, but I do love that it is so cheap to put out. And you're right, especially in a mirror match, you can uh, you can kill those little guys. Yeah. Also, for anybody listening, in case you didn't listen to any of our old episodes, champ is good, chump is bad. <laughs> right. <laughs> in case that wasn't obvious. <laughs> uh, I'll go... I'm going to go chump on this right now. Okay, that's fair. Um, this next one feels pretty fun. This yeah. is Arcana King Charles. So another <laughs> other lander. Five cost reduced by three. Level one for one core, he has 3,000. Level two for two cores, 4,000. Level three, three cores, 5,000. So again, that very simple scaling stat line, kind of cheap, but not that powerful. Uh, but... This has the level 1, 2, and 3 when summoned. Reveal the top card of your deck. If it is a spirit card with the same cost as any of your spirits, summon it without paying its cost. Otherwise, oh discard it. And then at level 2 and level 3, all of your yellow spirits gain other lander spirit types. So here, now we're, now we're starting to see, we're building up to what other landers want to do. But that when summoned effect, especially in yellow, but honestly, even out of yellow, he might splash into some other stuff. 
If it is a spirit card with the same cost as any of your spirits, summon it without paying its cost. That means yeah. you can pull like okay. I was playing with a yellow deck that had uh Nauman Guard in it and the Dragon Ship Enterprise, right? So consider this. You have your God Beast Behemoth. This is mostly a yellow little little wide deck, but then you drop King Charles. And if he sees Nauman Guard, Nauman Guard's on the field for free. Oh, that that's pretty good. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I think this guy oh, so is entering champ territory because that yeah, is a very can, cool effect. You can there's I think there are some cards that allow you to rearrange the order of cards on the top of your deck in some way. Yeah, and if there aren't, I bet there will be. Because if you can yeah. tutor that exact situation or even just getting any other spirit on the field, like if you're running twos and just want to summon another two, your odds of hitting a two are there. But like yeah. it can be any cost is one of your spirits. So like there's a Fine. lot you can do with them. My mind immediately went to two, but to your point, I think where this really shines is when you're pulling in expensive stuff for free. Out out of color. Yes, I agree. Yeah. I'm going to put Nauman Guard in my yellow decks because it ramps, and yellow wants to ramp, and it also draws, and yellow wants to draw. Um, yeah. And King Charles can maybe help that work even better, and I think that's very, very cool. And it makes it, and whatever you pull out, it makes it an other lander, which... There's gotta. I haven't. I honestly have not looked through these yet, so I'm not I haven't just saying either. this to like play dumb. But there has to be some card in here that does something for other landers. Though. Yes. So I'm assuming we'll get to it. But um, oh I took a peek my. at the next card. So oh <laughs> my. You look. You seeing what I'm seeing? <laughs> I am. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you're seeing it too. Before we even talk about it, go ahead, Eric. This Light, I. Oh my gosh. Light Emperor Lumiere. It's a six cost, three reduction, other lander. It's this like beautiful light up dragon with like samurai kind of, or like it's almost like medieval, uh, like royal armor and dressing to it. But yeah. anyways, enough about the art because uh, at level one, one core, 4K, level two, three cores, 6K, level three for four cores, 8K. And at all three levels, when it's summoned, you can give one of your spirits blessed for the rest of the turn. I immediately think to Alice, who basically can't die oh, uh, in the right yeah. circumstances. So this just adds insult to injury there. You drop Lumiere, you give Alice blessed, you're going to swing with Alice anyway. Now your opponent has a really hard choice. Do they dip something to Alice, or do they let that bless goes through, or go through? And I... Whew, Woo! I didn't think we would get so much blessed so quickly, and I did not think we would get an ability that could give anything blessed. Um, this is nuts. And that's not even its only ability. At level three, it has blessed. It gains blessed for four cores and an 8k stat line. So that's the strongest thing that we have seen with blessed, but yes. its other ability can make a stronger blessed. You can give that yep. blessed to Behemoth. You can give it to Nauman Guard. You can, you can give, give it, it to, to a flame fish. Yes, you can give it to anything. The turn it uh, summons. So I'm running three or four copies of Lumiere. Yep. Yeah. I mean, so you give it. You could give it to a curse creature. You could give it yep. to. I think where this shines is, you either put it in your blessed deck, and then the turn that you play it, you can give itself blessed until you have enough cores to ramp it to level three the next turn. Um, or you're playing this with like flame fish and cursed creatures. Um, you're playing, playing it your... with Raphael who says your opponents. Oh wait, no, you're playing it with something that says like they can't be blocked by this. You're giving that bless oh to a little thing and that little thing Derm sneaks Dina. in. Yeah. Or Derm Dina. Yeah. <laughs> oh, King Charles, Emperor Lumiere, the only two yellows you need in a full white deck of Derm Dinah, Nauman Guard, and you start pushing Blessed in with white control, you you win. <laughs> I mean, hear me out. What if you did um, white aggro with yellow Blessed? I'm and telling so you. You Valkyrie Mist and Dream Bomb all of their stuff to their hands, and oh then you just swing gosh. every turn. 
they're losing life, you're gaining life, I think I would just scoop. Yeah. Yellow. I would just scoop, I would just scoop my cards up and walk away. Yep. <laughs> Other lander mecha. Let's make it happen. That's so exciting. Well, he's been... I, I, you've always been much more interested in yellow than I have been. Uh, the whole time... I've been kind of interested in, like, Luster or, like, I think the Pentans are kind of interesting. But sure. I got to say, with the spoilers I've seen today, I'm probably going to have a yellow build that I'm, <laughs> I'm playing around with. I'm so or glad we least... have a podcast because I've been singing Yellow's praises from the beginning. No one can I call know. me a bandwagoner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm jumping on the bandwagon. Hell yeah. You've we got been, room. You've been riding, riding with Yellow, uh, you know, since there's just the two cost deck really the aggro <laughs> my first shiny card i pulled was hippocampo and i was like yes this is mine now yellow is it mine meant to be. it was i love it i could gush about lumiere all day but we got to keep going um yep. and speaking of luster we're now gonna see some other lander support for uh the luster mechanic and uh reducing bp like i said earlier this is arcana princess Anne. five cost reduced by four so again, these other landers are weak, quote unquote, but they're yeah. cheap. They're they're so cheap and they do some cool stuff. So at level one for one core, 3K. Level two for two cores, 4K. Level three for three cores, 5K. We've seen that exact stat line like three times now. Level yeah. one, two, and three when summoned. During this turn, when one of your other other or I'm sorry, when one of your other lander spirits is destroyed by your opponent. When another other lander is other. <laughs> yeah. When one of your other lander spirits is destroyed by your opponent, select one of your opponent's spirits, reduce its BP by one thousand during this turn. Uh Charles makes all your yellows other landers. So you start going really aggressive in the yellow, really going hard. Um, and I'm a bit confused about how to build this deck because Prince Charles or King Charles, Prince Charles, <laughs> <laughs> King Charles gives you um, all of your spirits become other landers. But like, how do you build that? Do you mostly? I, I think it's not... aggro. It's yellow aggro. All the little do doctor most... ducks, free stall. Do, do you mostly build? Is that just like a bonus thing? And like, you mostly have other landers anyways, or are you like building? not around other landers but they all become other landers i think like, that i think okay. that like you're putting in the ducks you're putting in the pentans you're putting in all the stuff with luster and a lot mm -hmm. of those right now aren't other landers so you put in I princess see. anne with those drowsy fumes angelic pressures and michaela and you can you can afford to swing with the little guys because blessed cathedral is going to let you draw freestyle is going to let you draw and you can start reducing the big guys by just throwing your little guys in and so at level mm. three, this also gains luster, which obviously points towards that as well. So th we're getting to the point where if anyone out there listening has played Digimon, this is just yellow and Digimon. This is shining Greymon. Like this is the reduction. And that's really, really fun to me. It wasn't powerful enough, I don't think, in the first set. But now we're starting to see that just devastating like bits of draining over time that can like really really ramp in a turn with luster and you get all those cards back and you can just keep draining and i think that that can be really fun someone way smarter than me is going to build a very good reduction bp deck with yellow uh when set two comes yeah. out that's what i'm I, thinking i think i'm not seeing it right now because i i haven't pieced it together like you were just talking about like i it's like a thousand BP here, two thousand BP here. It feels like nothing, but I think if you really got this, you know, this clock moving, you got this thing spinning, you're gonna be like, okay, this turn I reduce all of your spirits by like four thousand, five thousand. Like, yep. It's okay. Um, next card, perfect companion to Lumiere. Yep, I was just thinking that. Uh, Arcana Joker, five cost to reduction other lander, level one, two, and three costed at one two three and it's two thousand three thousand four thousand so that seems to be the other lander thing yep so when summoned at one two and three the spirit cannot be blocked during this turn so automatic automatic hit yep just unless they flash in removal it's right. getting through unless they drain it so again the the best thing 
to beat this is itself. Well, so when this spirit attacks at level two or three, select one of your other other lander spirits, activate one of its when summoned effects with this spirit. So you you play Lumiere last turn, you give you give itself blessed, and then this turn you drop Arcana Joker and put it at level two or three, swing in unblockable and it gains blessed. Yep, that's exactly the way to go. This is so cool. Yeah, that's this gonna be a very, such a frustrating combo. This is a very good card, and also now I want to go back through all of the wind summoned abilities in the entire game to yeah. see what other broken combos I can come up with. Right, because Charles can make all your yellows other landers, but yellow is full of wind when summons. Yeah. So it's definitely mono yellow. The way that you were going through that, definitely, it, it's it's for Lumiere first and foremost, yeah. but there's some other tricky stuff you can do too. So you're running four copies of Joker and four copies of Lumiere and you're flooding yeah. the board with little guys to reduce them as much as you can. And that's exactly what you do. You go, I mean, Lu Joker, Joker can't be blocked. Joker has blast. Boom. Joker definitely goes in the blessed deck. And even if you don't give him blessed, like a lot of times, um, just that one sneaky damage. I mean, you can end a game like that. You absolutely can. Joker drop... is champ. Yeah, absolute champ. I mean, you're going to have to run removal for this. Um, and it goes up to 4K at level 3, so Burning Force ain't going to cut it. Yep. That's uh, true. You're going to need you're going to need your soul core and your uh, volcanic uh, <laughs> I can't remember the name of that card, but But yes. I know what you're talking about. The uh, Is it just Volcanic Force? No. Burning Force, Volcanic <laughs> something. Who knows? Let me um, look it up really quick just so we, we don't sound like idiots. Okay. Uh, <laughs> volcanic Break. There it is. Yes. But yeah. Uh, yeah. This, this guy is tough to deal with. He's really good. He's also an uncommon, so like... Yeah. You can get this pretty easily. Oh, I cannot wait to build a Blast deck. I'm so excited. I can't excited. believe that one of the colors I'm most excited for in a set that has Gundam alt arts coming out is yellow cards. That's right. Welcome to the dark side, baby. <laughs> um, I think now we're getting into some more angel support, which is pretty exciting. Yeah, I've been waiting for angel support, so <sighs> Me too. I'm excited. This is a beautiful card. Like, yes. this is... I want foils of this. Yeah, this is a Bandai Namco, like masterpiece card like this I is what th they I, do i bet there's going to be a super of this card that's going to look amazing yep full art crazy shiny this yeah. is heavenly gate guardian clavis this is an eight cost reduced by three yellow angel spirit uh x rare so this is like your angel boss even higher than michaela uh at level one for one core 5k level two for three cores 7k level three for four cores 10k so outside of behemoth now we're finally getting some bigger stats for a yellow creature uh, at level one two and three when summoned select one of your spirits return all yellow magic cards from your trash to your hand that costs the same as that spirit oh my gosh so you know luster support that's really great yeah. um a lot of really great two cost yellow spells a uh, lot of, I mean, Royal Potion being able to pull that back out with some of your level fives like Joker or King Charles. Royal Potion's very good. Um, even three cost. There's a lot of good three cost cards in the deck um, and a lot of good three cost magics. It, it's great. And if Guardian Clavis is out there with Michaela, you can also grab Exhaust Nexus from the discard pile. That's pretty cool. So that's on when oh, summoned. Yeah. So you can do a lot of really tricky things towards the end game here. Um, and at level three, so with four cores on Clavis, when the spirit attacks, when this spirit is blocked, treat the blocking spirit as level one during the battle. So hard to get past 10k if you're only level one. Yeah, I can't think of any spirits at level one that can deal with 10k. No, I mean, just curse. Like, you'd have to be able to block with curse. The curse only works when it when it attacks. Yeah. I'm pretty sure there's nothing that defends with curse, but yeah. Wait, there has to be. But still, like, 
Clavis is going to be hard to kill. This is going to be one of those like, oh, crap, Clavis is out. I might just want to scoop. I really think so. It's it's very good. Whew. It's a really good card. I'm interested. This isn't really leaning into any type of angel specific build, but I have a feeling we're going to get there. Yeah, I, I think it's just, you know, the next iteration of of Michaela and the luster stuff. Mm -hmm. Um and just with a, a better stat line. And yeah, just that kind of luster, yellow control. This is your end game. You you put this one down and grab all your tricks and it's over. Yeah. This is a very similar to to Giganto Rex. This is a difficult card to deal with. Yeah. Like, I agree. Even even core drain doesn't fix this one because it's no. got four four cores on it at level 3. And I mean, you're putting four cores on this thing. Yeah. This, uh, you want to take this next one? I don't think we've talked about the Void Lords yet. Fallen Angel Acedia? Acadia? Mm hmm. Uh, Angel Void Lord, 10 cost. This is the most expensive card, I think, in the game right now, right? There's a Void Lord for each color. Okay, so those are all 10. Yes. Um, I'll have to go back through my some of our recordings or something. I remember there was some specific reason I was waiting for really expensive cards, but I can't remember why. Yeah. We... I, had, I had some sort of idea, but <laughs> um, anyways, 10 cost, six reduction. Am I re Yeah. Six reduction. Yeah. Level one for one core, seven K level two for four cores, 10 K level three for six cores, 15 K. So <laughs> the angel we were just looking at still tramples over this uh if it blocks unless they can boost it uh, yeah because it'd be down to 7k that's nuts yeah and it's kind of expensive but obviously you're getting a huge number yeah 15k is massive yeah all right so level one two and three when summoned all non-void lord spirits are treated as level one during this turn that's crazy that includes good. your own though which is could be a bummer yeah, you're probably repositioning your cores onto this thing anyways, though. That's fair. Because it costs, it's going to cost at least four, and then you're going to need six. If yeah, you wanna, you're going to want to buff it up. I feel like yeah. this, this definitely works in a wide yellow deck because you are keeping them all level one anyway. So that that's a good point. I feel like that's a fair trade. I also, just to talk about the art, I cannot tell what's happening here. Is it's it a little like hard to read like a suit of armor with like a biblically accurate angel head yeah it kind of looks like that it looks like um <laughs> i always equate everything to keyforge it looks like uh the spirits in keyforge the sanctum knights oh yeah I um because it's just you know holy light possessed armor uh but it is it yeah it's a little hard to read but it is neat uh there's more though uh level two and level three during your attack step, while your Void Lord spirits are attacking, they cannot be blocked by spirits with fewer BP than them. Jeez uh, Louise. In other words, everything. <laughs> yeah. Give this guy blast. Well, at level three, he gets luster. <laughs> <laughs> so. Unbelievable. That That's, yeah. This is a scoop. What? If a Void Lord comes down, you're like, oh, I'm dead. I mean, what? What are you lustering with this? Like what? Honestly, you... I have no idea. I'm not a luster player. I understand that there's like those endless combos with like the royal potions and stuff, but like it's a little too thinky for me. Yeah, like at that point, like who cares about the luster? This guy can't be blocked. He's got 15k. Hopefully you gave him blessed and he's just going to tear into your opponent turn after turn. Like, how do you even get rid of something like this? I'm, I guess purple. You dream bomb it. <laughs> yeah, you dream bomb it. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Actually, if you dream bomb this, your opponent is in a bad situation. That's true. They just used all their cores on this guy. Yep. All their cores are level one for the rest of the turn. and Or all of their spirits are level one for the rest of the turn. And now they don't have a big guy. I'm so. going to venture to say, and obviously we haven't played with these cards yet, but I'm going to... I have a theory here. Okay. The Void Lords in this game are going to play like Galactus does in Marvel Snap. If anyone out there plays Marvel Snap like I do, um, Galactus, you know, the big bad guy that destroys everything, 
basically if you can kind of trick your opponent or force your opponent into not being able to answer this you kind of win um mm. but it's still very stoppable so it goes back to that make them have it that that yeah. you were talking about eric so like i feel like this is going to be instead of more of like an obvious throw this in every deck and and play it it's going to be like you have to expect it and there are definitely big ways around it but if you can't then these void lords are going to really wreck you so i don't think they're going to be as impactful as some of these other like eight drops i really that's that's kind of where i'm at and i play galactus on marvel snap like an asshole even after the nerf <laughs> so it, it can still be done yeah i don't know this it's just really weird i mean definite champ uh for sure i would wait to see this might be a, a one of it might be a four of i have no idea yeah four it's... of seems rough i mean you draw this in your opening hand and i think you you have to mulligan pretty yeah much. like i mean honestly I, I must... anytime you're top decking it's not fun to see so i i don't know if i'd put more than two yeah if you're if you're down like and you need to top deck like removal or something or just like any type of spirit to block with and then you draw this and you don't have a way to reduce the cost you're probably just screwed so i i have an idea <laughs> okay mostly yellow deck king charles and all the void lords <laughs> so you just make them other landers <laughs> Well, and you, oh, you, you, you play them for yes. free. You bring oh. in this guy, and then you play the when summon, flip the top card of your deck or whatever. And if it's a 10, you get another free Void Lord on the, on the field. I don't know how well they would synergize together, but any free 10 drop is going to be awesome. That's some nasty, casual, petitive build yeah, building. I, and I, I might try it. to make that deck. You're making your Gundams. I'm going to make a full Void Lord deck. <laughs> I have a feeling that is going to be an expensive deck, but we'll yeah. see how much these... I have these... Here's the financial analysis portion. Uh, <laughs> I I have no data to back this up, but just based on other card games I've played, these big, splashy cards, I, I would personally wait to purchase them. Yeah. This is what I'm going to do. Like, I'm not going to buy the Void Lords right when they come out because they're probably going to be, like, way overpriced. Right, because they... Be, the Big numbers, big, shiny numbers, you know? It, it's and it's only a rare. You're gonna open some if you if you get some packs. Yeah, these are probably gonna be like really expensive when they first come out because it's the new big shiny thing. Everyone's excited about it, and then when the dust settles, maybe one or two of these will hold their value, and the rest of them would be like, eh, this one doesn't really get as much play. I'm making a Void Lord deck, all four Void Lords. It's my Egyptian God deck. I cannot wait. I'm excited. <laughs> so um, jank. Right. So. The next card is Great Shield Angel. We'll move on to get get some more. Oh, the, and and of course it's it's worth it to mention that that last card was an angel as well. Yeah, um, Angel Void Lord. So Great Shield Angel, three cost, three reduction. You know I love that. Yep. Uh, this is a textless card. One core for two thousand at level one. Uh, level two, two cores for four K, and at level three, four cores for six K. Not um, bad. That's a decent little angel. I I think on its own probably leans more towards chump than champ but yeah um i think if we get some solid angel support i could see it getting play yeah it is nice that you know we we have this three cost three reduction yellow card um because yeah I, honestly I mean, bearded, like bearded eagle is a champ yeah like you slot this in with a deck that it's yellow aggro this deck or this card wants to be in yellow aggro you put in your sword yeah. angel which is two 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 cost two reduction you put in the great shield angel three cost three reduction suddenly you just have a lot of free cards coming out and then you just push you know it, it's for yellow aggro it's it's not bad i like it yeah i i can see this yeah i unfortunately don't think we've at least it hasn't been spoiled we haven't seen like a really strong reason to go full on into angels but yeah not yet yeah um and even still with this next one mace angel um six cost two reduction yellow angel spirit 
Uh, level 1 for 1 core, 3k. Level 2 for 2 cores, 5k. Level 3 for 4 cores, 7k. Level 1, 2, and 3, while this spirit attacks, it gets luster. So a little more luster support. I don't know how much this card is needed in luster decks. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, the 7k is... That's think, It's not bad. Yeah, I think luster doesn't necessarily have high BP yeah. um, on the higher end, so... He, this, guy, this is a tricky guy. You swing in with him, and your opponent's like, well, I have a 7k I could jump block with, like, yeah. in, in white. You know, Stream Otter can cover this guy. But then you go, yeah. Angelic Pressure. Oops, putting that back in my hand after I kill your Stream Otter. And then you're yeah. like, oh, okay, Mace Angel, a little tricky. So, you know what? Yeah. I take it back. There is some merit to this guy. He's a little expensive. Thing, yeah, 6 cost 2 reduction is steep. Like, on, on, on turn, if you want him at his best it's gonna cost eight cores and that's yeah, a lot and even then the utility in this card is in being able to play magic so right which you need more cores for or i guess yeah. you know you can reduce them with the luster stuff but so not really gonna attack with luster in the turn you play it unless you know three unless 3k or 5k will do it for you yeah and that's all the yellow that we've seen as of the recording of this uh june 16th and do I do you have to go, Eric? I think you do. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to call it there. But we can always do. I think next time we could do. Um, I really do want to look at the white, but I we'll do see. too. We'll see. We'll see what yeah. we do next time. We might go back into spoiler terror. We might try something different. We're definitely gonna hear about uh, Eric Store Championship. So good luck this weekend. I'm still Thank you. so bummed. I'm not going. Um, yeah, I wish you could go. <laughs> me too. But we'll we'll find some more tournaments to get to. Um, yeah, we this did was get a, a new blast subscriber on on YouTube, I think, but I didn't see who it was. I saw that we got a new one too, so thank you for being here. Welcome. Um, <laughs> if you are watching the YouTube video, I've put back up Clockadile, and I I'm gonna get a Clockadile tattoo. I love this thing. <laughs> wait, wait, what? <laughs> Not really. Maybe. Oh, okay. I don't know. Um, it's so I think cool. I run that by your wife first. Nah, she'd be into it. This is such a cool card. I love it. Oh, you're looking at Clockadile right now? You're yeah. Back. That's what I you were saying. I love okay. Clockadile. I am pretty stoked for Clockadile. All right. So we're going to eventually, we'll have a P.O. box, and we want you to send your foil flame wheels, weasels, and yes. your foil Clockadiles. Send us your Clockadile fan art. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Or oh, if you we... get a Clockadile tattoo, do it. What if we made a Clockadile clock? Oh, my gosh. What I if we made that. a Clockadile clock and we listened to, cl to Crocodile Rock while we <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. You know how like, you know, in baseball, when they come to the plate, they have like their, their like pump up song and like wrestlers when they're getting into the ring, they're playing it. I'm going to yeah. show up to Gen Con with my Fabled Beast Blast deck and a boom box on my shoulder. And I'm just blaring Crocodile Rock. <laughs> and I've got like a suit with just Clockadiles all over it oh man i can't wait yeah i'm gonna look like flav of flav the battle spirits ip is um i never even heard of battle spirits until we got into battle spirits saga and i gotta say i love all the little creatures and stuff they do such a good job uh designing them they're all really fun i yeah especially my little fabled beasts flying turtle stole my heart hippocampo is beautiful crocodile best boy love him Love it. Uh, right. Yeah, we got to go. Probably do it. <laughs> Thank you all for tuning in to another episode of Absolute BSS. You can uh, obviously listen to us on any podcast if you're listening to us there. You can also catch the video companion on YouTube where we put the cards up on the screen. And there are also some other fun YouTube videos like Eric unboxing the first set. And we just put up our first gameplay video um, on the very awesome scripted TTS mod. So be sure to check those out. Give us a like, subscribe to the channel if you want. Leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or whatever. And uh, we will uh, keep doing this. We're having a lot of fun with it. So you can send us emails, absolutebsspod at gmail.com. And that's also where you can find us on Twitter and the YouTube, like I mentioned. Anything else from you, Eric? I think that just about covers it. Thanks for watching and listening, everybody. Yeah. Good luck, Eric. I'm excited to Thanks. hear how it goes. Me too. All right, we'll catch you all on the next one. Until then, stay safe, stay good to one another, and play some Battle Spirits. 
Stay Bye. casual, petitive. Stay See casual, you. petitive.